Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Actually, I am very happy that we dedicated this year to the ministry of the lost sheep. And also, I am happy because many churches are starting to respond actively to this uh, ministry. And many people dedicated uh, days for fasting, uh, prayer, uh, visitation, asking about them. And this is actually the first uh, conference or retreat uh, about to actually equip and prepare us as a servant to this ministry, the ministry of the lost sheep. And actually, the church has a responsibility toward every single person in the world. Not only toward the believers. That's why we can classify the people in the world into two, three groups. One group, the active servants, the active, sorry, believers. Second group is the lost sheep, who are believers also, but they are lost. And the third group is the non-believers. So the church ministry, we can actually classify it into three ministries. The ministry of spiritual care, which is directed toward the active members in the church. The ministry of the lost sheep, which is directed toward the lost sheep. And the ministry of evangelism, which is directed toward the non-believers. The ministry of the spiritual care can be classified into preventive and nurturing. Preventive, how to prevent them from being lost. Nurturing, how to nurture them in order to grow into spiritual maturity. Ministry of the lost sheep can be classified into two ministries. The ministry of outreach, which is searching for the lost sheep, and the ministry of healing. The lost sheep, when he comes back to the church, will be full of wounds. How to accept him and how to prepare a godly and a therapeutic atmosphere to promote his healing from all the wounds. And the third ministry, which is evangelism, we can divide it into two ministries, preaching, and then for those who will accept and believe, the second ministry will be grafting, how to graft them in the body of Christ, how to implant them in the body of Christ. This actually conference or retreat is focused on the second ministry. Second year, just classification, not second in importance. But the ministry of the lost sheep and the key element in this ministry is the servant, the servant of the lost sheep. That's why the first uh, two lectures are about the characteristics of the servant of the lost sheep. And we will try to discuss what is the secret behind the success of this ministry. Is it science? Is it skills? Is it experience? Is it training? Is it personality? Is it spirituality? All of the above, what is it? The lost sheep usually, they have a lot of insecurity. So how to earn their trust is very important. How to let them open up and speak to you. 
unless they trust you, there will be like a huge barrier between you and them. And the only way actually to break this barrier is to earn their trust. When you earn their trust, you will be effective in their life. You can influence their life. You can influence their reaction and how they respond to the calling of the Lord. And it goes without saying that your own spiritual life has a very important influence on the whole ministry. And some weaknesses in our spiritual life can be can influence negatively this ministry. And this weakness, we need to avoid, avoid them completely. So, as I said, the, perso the personality of the servant and its characteristic has an amazing effect in this ministry. And we should know that the essence of this ministry is revolving around the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. What do I mean by this? If we turn our Bibles to Colossians chapter 1, verse 6 and, uh, 26 and 27, St. Paul says, The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations. So St. Paul is speaking about a mystery, mystery that was hidden but now has been revealed to his saints. But God actually revealed this mystery now to the saints. To them, God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. What does this mean? And why St. Paul in particular mentioned the Gentiles? The Jews actually believed in the Old Testament to be the chosen people of God. And the Gentiles are not his people. So the Gentiles are the lost sheep. They are not the people of God. So what is this mystery? The mystery is God actually had a plan to save the world. Not only to save the Jews, the people of God, but to save also the lost sheep, the Gentiles. That's why he said, to them God willed to make known to the saints, to the believers, as the last uh, uh, two words in, uh, in verse 26, has been revealed to his saints. So God revealed to the saints, who are the saints? The active believers in the church. So God revealed to these saints, to them, God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. What's the riches of glory of salvation among the Gentiles? God wanted to show the believers how God actually will save the lost sheep, the Gentiles. And actually, they will participate in the riches of the glory of the salvation. And all of this, because of whom, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ is our hope to be glorified 
in eternal life. And this brings me to another question that the Lord Jesus Christ asked about himself in Matthew 22, 42, when he said, Whom do you think that Christ, the son of whom he is? Who is Christ to you? For some of us, Christ is the God of the scenes. And many times, we actually perceive God and sometimes we preach him as he is angry at the lost sheep. He doesn't like them. He's disappointed at them. And we can actually reflect this in our attitude toward the lost sheep. When actually we take a stand, we don't show them acceptance, we don't show them love. So, who do you think Christ is he? One time, Jesus Christ, after he called Matthew, the tax collector. So Matthew actually invited his friends who are his friends, the tax collectors and the sinners? If we are speaking in the 21st century, and God called the Matthew, if this happened in, in this time, so God called Matthew, so Matthew invited his friends. So if you look at the dinner, that Matthew is doing, you will find people not the stereotype in our mind of the believers. Maybe they have piercing all over their body. Maybe they have tattoo all over the body. Maybe they are wearing clothes in you know the fashions of these days. You know, their looks will be not the familiar to us. And you are standing there and you saw Christ entered into this dinner. What would be your reaction? How do you perceive Christ at this moment? I am afraid that some of us will react like the scribe and the Pharisees. And then we'll question why your master is eating with the tax collectors, with the sinners, with those who have piercing all over their body, with those who have tattoo. Definitely, I'm speaking about tattoo and piercing are acceptable. I'm not saying this. But I'm saying how would actually judge the situation? Think about it. I want you to think about it for one second. And to be honest with yourself. How you will react to this dinner. How you would react to this dinner. Are you going to react like the scribe and Pharisees? And here the Lord answered and told them, why do you marvel? I did not come to call righteous. I don't come to call actually those who are self-righteous. Because if you judge Christ because he entered into this dinner, you are a self-righteous person. I did not come to call self-righteous to repentance. Why? Why he did not come to call them? Because they will not accept his calling. They are self-righteous. They don't need repentance. Do you remember the prayer of the Pharisees? I thank you, God. I'm not like the tax collectors. 
This attitude was the self-righteous.